What's going on everybody and welcome back to Meadow Green Homesteading. So today's a beautiful spring day and we're trying to knock out some really just small chores that we have going on around our homestead. One in particular is the barn rainwater collection system which has been working phenomenal for us. But we do have a couple of leaks at the IBC totes with all the plumbing so I got a couple parts that we're going to be replacing on that. Then I'm going to be introducing you guys to Doc Arbor so I'll give you a proper introduction of him and then our two gilts and one barrow that we have. We've had them for a couple weeks and they're absolutely adorable. So stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss this. All right, so we got the overflow all put on and I'm just holding this PVC together with a couple of plastic coated screws because I don't want to glue it together in case we need to take it apart. So this goes all the way down behind the totes right here and it follows the barn all the way through here and then exits right at the corner of the barn. And I'm doing this because I don't want the totes overflowing in this ground area right here. I don't feel like a lot of vegetation is going to grow underneath here and keep the bank together. So. I'm figuring if I just pour all the water over here down to the docks pen, he'll be happy with that and keeps the erosion down. All right, so we fixed all the leaks in our RBC totes. Now what I'm going to be doing is taking the faucet off these IBC totes and plumbing in a hard line for our bore right inside. So let's go check out what we have going on in here for the bore. And I'll show you guys the watering can set up. All right, so this is our watering can we have set up for our bore. And right now I just have a half inch poly line coming in here where we just been siphoning water into this as we need it. But I did say in a previous video we would be moving this outside at some point. And I think that at this point we're going to leave this inside. He's used to it right here and the water is shedding nicely outside right over here. So I don't see any problem with leaving it right here. But for those who have not seen him yet, this is Doc, our boar. So Doc is our Berkshire boar that we picked up about three weeks ago, and he is a very good boy. He loves his scratches, and he is covered in mud today. It's been pretty cold the last couple days, so he's just been kind of in here napping, and I think with this warm spring weather today, it's getting kind of muddy outside, and Doc's been making the best of it, like pigs usually do. But he is very, very friendly. He's adapted to our farm very well, and he seems to really like the gilts. He's been hanging out down here with the gilts, who we'll go see in a minute. Before we go and see the gilts, I'm going to go ahead and let's start getting this water line set up for him. And then we'll move on down there and see how things are going with the uh, little piggies. <laughs> all right, so we've got all the water drained out of this front section right here. First thing I need to do is go ahead and put some Teflon tape on this three quarter to three quarter male nipple. And then we're going to thread this in and we can thread this into the PVC and get our plumbing started. Let's give ourselves about three wraps on that. Now we've got some three quarter inch pipe. We're gonna have to cut some small sections off of this pipe. Slip our little piece of three quarter inch pipe right in. Let go of the hose. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> He's rubbing on it. Don't bite it. Oh man. 
Come on, Doc. Oh, come on. Oh, Doc. I should have known that was going to happen. And I didn't lock the door, so. Now we got to figure out a way to get him back inside. Come here, buddy. Hey, Doc. Oh, God. Well, that was fun. Luckily, Doc likes more food more than he likes freedom. So he's back in his pen. That was fun. We're going to try and use these poly steaks. I was trying to save on some of the T posts that we have, but I imagine once this gets hot and it's full of water, it's going to be pretty heavy. But we're going to give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll come back with the T-posts and we'll put some T-posts up that are more rigid. I'm one zip tie short. Of course I'm one zip tie short. <sighs> Whoa, there's a whole pile of them right here on the ground. Well, we let Doc out. That was fun. It took me about 10, 15 minutes to get him back in. He was more interested in whatever was in the barn rather than the food I was trying to give him. But eventually I got him back in. He went right down into the watering hole here and started wallowing around. So we did get the plumbing on the IBC totes done and Doc's watering can is all plumbed. So we have this watering line coming around here. And of course it's on the poly post for now. I think I am gonna go through and put the T post in because I don't think that these poly posts are gonna last very long with the weight of the water. But this is where we're keeping the gilts. So we've got a nice little hut made for them. Of course they pulled off the tarp in the corner but they've been doing really good. So we have two gilts and one barrow. We have not named them yet. The barrow will be processed in about six months and the gilts we're keeping to breed. So this guy right here, that's the barrow. He's got a spot right on his back. And the other two are our females. So they got a nice little cozy hut right in here and they've done a heck of a job already tearing out this four wheeler path right here, but these little guys have just been rooting, rooting, and rooting around. And I really think that Doc is enjoying their company. He's taken to just sitting right over here and hanging out with them. He's got himself a nice little cool spot where he's dug up all the grass where he lays down. Kind of just chills there and watches them do their thing. Now they're gonna be in here for about six months and we have to play this situation by ear because in about four months, they're actually old enough to breed. So. My problem with my timing right now is that their pen is right up against Doc's pen and if they go into heat and they're ready to breed at four months when we don't want to breed them until almost seven months, I don't know if the electric fence is going to be enough to hold them out. So this is going to be a play by ear situation. We may have to move them further away. But that's also the reason why we went and used the poly stakes and the poly wire in the solar charger. That way we can do something more mobile rather than running an AC charger and high tensile steel all the way up here and putting T-posts and everything else in the ground. So we're keeping it mobile for now until we kind of figure out what we want to do with the pigs and how things go. This is our first time having pigs. So it's all going to be a learning experience for us and we're really looking forward to it. So this is kind of a temporary feeding solution that we have set up for them right now just to get them going. I have so many chores around here and so many things to build that this has been kind of I wouldn't say low priority, just not at the top of the list. We're going to do some sort of like a 250 to 300 pound automated feeder that they can come in, pick up a board. Dang. Still getting used to me, huh? They can push up the board with their snout and then get food as they want. And that way it's covered by the rain and the food doesn't get destroyed. Um, we are going to be setting up another blue 55 gallon watering drum with two of the nipples like Doc has. I do have all the parts to make that. Again, I just haven't found the time. That's why I wanted to run the watering line down here so we could hardwire that into the IBC totes. My whole philosophy on this farm is really just to make things as hands-free as possible. And if you have to put your hands on it, make it as less time as possible. So that's my philosophy. And so far we've been able to manage it and stick to it. But, hi. Oh, it's 
the first time I've been able to pet him. Yeah. Somebody had an itch. Hi. So they've been here since Saturday, so it's day five for them. And pigs of this age are pretty skittish anyways. Uh, you know, it takes them probably, I would say, three months to really get used to you and get used to the feeding schedule. And once they know that you're the person that comes with the feed, they're pretty nice about it anyways, and they get pretty personable. But So when these three first got here, we actually had them in this hut for three days just so they knew that this was home base for them. In the meantime, we set up all this electric fence. And these pigs are not trained to electric fence. Doc was. He got it. He saw the fence. He knew exactly what it was. These three were not set up for electric fence. They were not trained for it. So we kept them in here for three days. Then we took the panel off. We set up the fencing and then we took the panel off and we just sat here and watched them. I sat out here for about five hours and we watched them make sure that they understood what the electric fence was. To no avail, the first time that they got shocked, they ran forward like everybody says that they do. They broke out, they got into Doc's pen and they kind of ran around for a little bit with Doc and nothing really happened there. They came back to the hut eventually. This is where they come back to be safe. So they came back to the hut and after that, they have not broken out since. So it's day three now that we've had them on the fencing system and they've had no problems with it. So fingers crossed, these three are all trained and hopefully they can start clearing out all this brush we have behind them. After they clear this area, We'll likely move them to another area. Just want to do a quick update before I end this video. I did notice quite a few of the poly stakes bent over in half last night before I left. So I went through, started putting some T-posts in the ground, and I finished that up this morning. So we have the three-quarter inch poly hose hanging off some nice rigid T-posts now. And I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's a lot better. And we got the watering can set up for them. So they're pretty happy. They've already made themselves a little wallow below it. And uh it's pretty warm out today, so I think they're enjoying their little puddle. Well, spring is finally popping. It's about 80 degrees today, so it's getting warm really quick, and I'm really glad that Doc has a little bit of a puddle to play in, and so don't the piglets. That's gonna be a wrap on today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the piglets. If you did, hit that like button for us. It helps us out a lot. And if you wanna watch our homestead grow, remember to hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you along for the journey. That's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you have a great day.